Hello everyone and welcome to BioTeach and another video on past paper questions. This time we're basing these questions on lipids, which is part of the biological molecules section on the AQA A-level biology. There are about seven questions that I'm going to talk you through in this particular video. And I just wanted to give you an opportunity to understand how to approach some of these questions and use key terms. So let's get going, shall we? The first question gives you a diagram that represents a triglyceride. On the first part of it, it asks you to name the molecules represented by boxes P and boxes Q. And this part of the question holds two marks in total. So you get one mark for labeling each of those accurately. From the previous video I've delivered to you, you should be able to tell that box P is a glycerol molecule and you should be able to tell that box Q is the fatty acid chain. Remember this is a triglyceride, so there are three fatty acid chains in this diagram. That's a nice easy one so far. If you end up getting the spelling of any of these incorrect, then they do accept a phonetic spelling, but it really is quite important to ensure that you do get the spelling correct as part of your revision. Part B of this question asks you to name the type of bond between P and Q in the diagram that's represented by the black lines leading from those boxes. Remember that the P and Q are the glycerol and the fatty acids, and this is a triglyceride. And so the, the only bond that this could represent is the ester bond. Question number two asks you to describe the difference between the structure of a triglyceride molecule and the structure of a phospholipid molecule. And the answer to this is worth one mark. So you do need to be quite brief about it. We know that in the phospholipid, there is one fatty acid that is replaced by the phosphate group. So that's enough to say in this particular one. They will accept a drawn diagram as long as it's annotated. So if you can't quite find the words in an exam and you draw it and label it, then that will be accepted as an answer as long as the labeling is correct. Part B asks about animal fats and how they contain triglycerides with a high proportion of saturated fatty acids. If people have too much fat in their diet, the absorption of the products of fat digestion can increase obesity. The question here is about describing how a saturated fatty acid is different from an unsaturated fatty acid. And you will see that the first part of it, you could really just talk about how saturated have single or they have no double bonds between the carbon molecules. You could even talk about the fact that unsaturated fatty acids have at least one double bond between the carbons. So either of those would suffice for one mark in this particular question. Question three shows you an image of triglycerides. We know that it's a triglyceride because we can spot the glycerol group on the left and we can also see the three fatty acids labelled as A, B and C. The first part of the question asks from how many molecules this triglyceride is formed. Well, we've got the glycerol molecule as number one and then we've got three fatty acids. So this particular answer is four, that it takes four molecules to form this triglyceride. Part B of the question asks you to describe how a triglyceride molecule is different from a phospholipid. You will see lots and lots of questions like this in an exam, but they just carry on repeating the same type of question. The answer for this is to simply talk about the fact that you've got a phosphate group in the phospholipid, and you could say that there are only two fatty acids present. Note here that you can write the formula for the phosphate, which is PO4, and they do accept the answer with minor errors, but they don't accept any errors such as saying phosphorus or the phosphorus group, so please make sure you say phosphate. In this particular question, I think it's easier to say phosphate anyway, rather than try to remember the formula, but of course it's up to you. The second part of question number three asks you to use the diagram to explain what's meant by an unsaturated fatty acid. And this is for two marks. Now we know all about unsaturated fatty acids that, with, that they have double bonds present between some of the carbon molecules. They could also have more than one double bond present. So you can say that for the first mark. You could also say for the first mark that the carbons are not saturated with hydrogen if you don't want to talk about the double, double bonds. For the second mark, you would say that the fatty acid that is unsaturated is fatty acid C. 
or the third fatty acid, just so that you are demonstrating that you understand which one is the unsaturated one. Question number four introduces you to something called a lestra, which is an artificial lipid. This type of question would expect you to apply some of your knowledge that you know from the theory of lipids. So it says here that a lestra is made from attaching fatty acids by condensation reactions to a sucrose molecule, and it even gives you the diagram of the structure of a lestra. It says where the letter R is, which is shown in bold, is where the fatty acid molecules are attached. The first part of the question asks you to label the bond X. Now this is part of the carbohydrates. We know that sucrose is a disaccharide and the bond X really is the glycosidic bond. So that's something that you should know from your revision. If you haven't already watched the video on carbohydrates and on glycosidic bonds, please make sure you go back and watch it as part of your revision. The second part of the question says that the triglyceride does not contain sucrose or the bond X. We know that sucrose and the glycosidic bonds are part of carbohydrates. The question says give one other way in which the structure of the triglyceride is different to olestra. So this is where your knowledge of triglycerides comes in, where you basically talk about the fact that the triglyceride has a glycerol molecule and three fatty acids. You could even talk about the fact that there's three ester bonds as part of it. Please ensure that as part of this question, you give the correct name of the bond, because if there's incorrect bond names, they will ignore that reference to that. And your answer has to refer to the triglyceride, because that's what the question is about. Of course, some students make mistakes and say that a triglyceride has three glycerol groups, and that's obviously rejected as part of the answer for that as well. So please make sure you remember that a triglyceride has three fatty acids and one glycerol group. The second part of this question asks you to state how many molecules of water would be produced when one molecule of olestra is formed. Now the R group shows where the fatty acids would be bonded to, so the first thing I would do is count the number of locations where the R is. And as I go around, I count eight locations of where the R is placed on this diagram. There is also the glycosidic bond that forms, and so that would be the ninth location where a water molecule would be released. So the answer for this particular question as to how many water molecules are produced when one molecule of electrical is formed is nine. Question number five gives you this diagram about triglycerides and it talks about how these are taken into the body from food as part of a balanced diet. It also talks about how fatty acids are transported into tissues by blood and at the bottom you've got three boxes showing you how when fatty acids are taken up by the cells what the uses of those fatty acids are. This then goes on to ask the question for four marks where you are asked to explain two ways in which the fatty acids are important in the formation of new cells. The clue in answering this question is provided in the three boxes in the diagram at the bottom, where you can talk about the use of making plasma membranes, the need for fatty acids that are respired for energy, and also talking about converted to other fatty acids. So the first thing I would talk about is the use of fatty acids in plasma membranes. We know that fatty acids are used to make phospholipids, and phospholipids make up the membrane. So Staying, stating those two points would give you two marks. A possible third mark um, for this section is to talk about the fact that the more phospholipids there are, the more membranes are made. But really for this section, you only need to mention any two of these points. The other two marks come from referring to the respiration part. Now, you may not have learned about respiration just yet, but we do know that fatty acids are respired to release energy, so that would give you an additional third point. And you could also talk about where there are more triglycerides, there is more energy released. There is also a final point here talking about the fact that energy is used for cell production or for making certain cell components, if you do want to mention that. And again, there's only two of these that you can um, you can mention. Question number six starts off by giving you a figure of a phospholipid that's shown on the left of this particular slide and you've also got a box that's labelled A. Note here as well you've got the X and Y labels just at the bottom. We'll come back to those in a second. The first part of the question asks you about naming the box A what which molecule this particular 
labelled area is. So we know that the phosphate group is at the top where you can see the PO3. So the second part of this particular phospholipid has to be the glycerol molecule. The second part of the question for one mark asks you to name the type of bond between A and the fatty acid X. Equally, you could say name the type of bond between A and fatty acid Y. For one mark, you need to state that this bond is always going to be an ester bond. And then you've got the third part of the question, which is also one mark, which asks you to state which of the fatty acids, X or Y, in the figure is unsaturated. So we know about unsaturated fatty acids having double bonds between some of their carbons. They might have one, they might have multiple. So we look at the fatty acid X and we can see that all of these carbons have got single bonds between them so it must be fatty acid Y that is the unsaturated fatty acid and we can see that double bond over there. Now the key thing here is also, although this is one mark they will not give you the mark for just saying that Y is a fatty acid that is unsaturated. The command word here is explain so you have to say why you think it is the Y fatty acid that is unsaturated. So the second part of your answer has to include the justification of saying that the fatty acid Y contains a double bond between the carbon atoms in the hydrocarbon chain. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Question number seven shows you a structure of a molecule of glycerol molecule and a molecule of fatty acid side by side. The first part of the question asks you to draw a diagram to show a structure of the triglyceride molecule and it awards you two marks for doing this correctly. Remember that if you're drawing the triglyceride molecule, you need to have three versions of these fatty acids to represent the triglyceride. So your answer should have three fatty acids attached with the ester bond labeled correctly and should look something a bit like this. The second part of the question asks you to explain why triglycerides are not considered to be polymers for one mark. Now we know about our definition of polymers being molecules made from many repeated units known as monomers. Now triglycerides are not made up of repeated units or made up of monomers and so that's the answer to this question. I always find it funny how students find it harder year on year to be able to verbalize their answer. They know the definition of a polymer, they know what a monomer is, and they also know why a triglyceride is not a polymer, but they can't seem to put it into words. So hopefully seeing these mark scheme answers will help you verbalize your answer on paper. Okay, so that's all I've got for you guys. I hope that was really helpful to look at everyone. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment on my videos. And if you've got any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. So leave them in the comment section of the videos. Thank you so much again. See you later, everyone. Bye for now.